Let's follow Philip. But you can see a lot of activity, lots of bees, all against the glass. Oh yes. There they are, everybody. <laughs> Hi bees, nice to meet you. Yeah, we'll be opening up your door soon here. So the first thing that I've done twice now is I've blown a little bit of smoke into the entrance of the hive. The theory is that, well, a couple theories. Some beekeepers claim that bees think that their hive is on fire and therefore they go into emergency escape mode, mm -hmm. which involves eating some of their honey stores because they may have to abandon their hive because it's on fire. So if they eat a bunch of their honey stores, they literally fill their stomachs up and they can't bend and sting anymore. They're less likely to sting. Because they're so full. Yeah. I've been that full, yeah. Yeah. Can't sting anybody. If you look really carefully, you'll notice the cells, they look identical and they look like they're going straight in, but they're at a slight angle downward towards the center. Mm, yeah. So when they store the, the nectar, it actually does, it doesn't drip out, it doesn't fall out. Oh, because of the gravity. Because of the gravity, it. yeah, folds it in. Mm. So we're going to leave this one there. Those bees look happy and busy. Mm, oh, that's beautiful. It is. I mean, it's beautiful to me because I've never seen that before. But to you, that's a good sign. This is a great sign and it's, yeah. Yeah, no matter how many times you see it, it's, this is beautiful. Well, this one's kind of cool. They'll, they'll leave openings like this in the comb yeah. so that it's like a shortcut. They can, they can pass from one bar to the other without going all the so way around. So that's just a shortcut for them to get through to the other side? Mm-hmm. Cool. I love me a sh good shortcut. Mm -hmm. See it? They've actually built an extra piece that's attached to this one which we're not excited about. We want it to so be... So they, they built that that way, not we didn't peel it off into that. No, okay. they built it that way. And you can see it on this side. It's fairly thin at the bottom, but up here at the top, it's really thick. We'd rather have it be yeah. all one thickness all the way through. So... Right. But if I was a bear, I wouldn't care. I would just... If you were a bear, you I would just start getting some honey, right? Exactly. Exactly. And take a few, a few stings. Take a few stings. The other thing that the bears eat when they, when they do um, go through a hive is they'll eat the babies. They'll eat the... the oh, uh, that's protein. Yeah. Exactly. Protein. So... That's the other half of it. It's the other half of it. So, and if you look at the bottom of this, on this side, mm -hmm. you see the cells are still open. They haven't sealed them yet. Oh, I see. That's where, I mean, where they're all gathered around? Yeah. Ooh. Yep, down there at the bottom. Okay. So that's where they, they're storing nectar. It hasn't quite dehydrated enough to be honey. Once it's at low enough water content, they'll cap it and it'll be honey. See. This one's actually about to break off. Mm. So I'm going to get as many of the bees off of it as I can. We're smoking them out. We're smoking them out. And then we're going to gently brush them off. We're going to get a, quite a few more in the air as a result. I see that. I, I would say they're getting excited, but it's because you're knocking them off into the air. Yeah. And it, Well, it, yeah, they're getting excited because I'm manipulating them, disturbing them. Disturbing them. <laughs> So the goal here is to remove as many bees from the comb as I can so that when I walk away from here over to my bucket... They don't all follow you. They don't follow me. There aren't any on the comb anymore. Yeah. So okay. if I'm patient, I can get We're most... We're in the process of sweeping off the bees. Me and the beekeeper and the bees are all here doing our thing. We're protected and we're connected. This is exciting. This, this next bar, I can see it already, has brood on it. It has baby bees 
inside the cone. You can tell that already from that side. From this side, yeah. yeah. From that side, and that you'll side. see it as soon as I lift it out. You'll see it on your side as well. The top is cap the very top inch is honey. Just below that it's kind of a darker brown rather than a yellowy tinge. Mm -hmm. That's capped brood. And then below that where it's open. I'm trying to get the light right so I can see. Um, you may be able to see some larva inside or eggs even inside the cells. Oh, so there are three types of bees. I told you about the queen mm -hmm. and the worker. And the workers are all female, you said. All female. And then there's the drone bee. And this one right here is a drone. There's another drone, two of them. They've got big, chunky, fat bodies, mm -hmm. big, bulgy eyes. They're the only males that you'll find in the hive. Certain uh -huh. times of year, there are lots of them. This time of year, there don't tend to be that many. And then if we flip to the other side, again, mostly honey, but a fair bit of that brood comb. Yeah, and the, and the drone. And the drone. So can you, can you pick out a drone on this side? Uh, I saw him. He was, there, he's up there. Yeah. Right? There's, there's the wings there. kind of give him away, I think. Mm -hmm. And what do the drones do in here? Well, that's a good question. As a male talking to another male, explaining to you about drones. Mm -hmm. Drones don't do anything. They mooch off of the hive, they eat the resources, they don't collect honey, they don't, they don't collect nectar or pollen. All they do is they wait around for a virgin queen to mate with. Oh, they're just hanging around waiting to mate? That's all they do. And then when they... Sounds pretty good. When they find a virgin queen to mate with, and they're lucky enough to mate with her, their reproductive organs are torn out of their body and left with the female queen. Oh, that doesn't and then sound so good anymore. the drone falls on the ground and slowly dies. Wow. So their sole purpose, the drone's sole purpose, is for reproduction within the hive. Yeah. That really is amazing stuff. So at this point, because we're into the what's called the brood chamber, yeah. where there's baby bees, we may see the queen. Okay. So we kind of got to keep our eyes sure. open. That's why I'm doing a little more investigation. The queen is about the same size as the drones, maybe a little bit longer, but she's narrower at the at the end. She sort of her her. Um, she's tapered. She tapered. So I got another one that's trying to either sting me or just stung me. Okay. So I'm gonna puff a little onto my hands. If they can't smell, what happens if they sting you is they, when they sting, they, they release a pheromone right at that point. And it tells the other bees, this is where you should sting. And so you're they actually come likely- towards to that spot. To, yeah, to get more stings in that same area. The other thing that they kind of key off of, and we're talking a lot, so we're releasing a lot of CO2, mm -hmm. that's what they key off of. So you often get them flying up near your face, because that's where you're releasing all your CO2 when you breathe out. I just got stung on the glove, but it was an accident, I think. I don't think the bee meant to do it. You can see right here where I'm sort of pinching my thumb in. Yeah. I caught a bee in there by accident. I see, okay. I'm on it. I try not to, I'll try not to. Yeah, so this is a really anybody. large chunk. Um, Do you need my help with that? No, I'm gonna start by cutting it in half and then the other half will go next. There we go. Okay, and then I'm gonna slice off the edge. One of the problems was they were making it a little too thick. So I'm just gonna shave down that thick spot, okay? So this one can then go right back into the hive and you can see- Oh, that it, one's good to go back. It's, it's good to go back because it's got nice comb on it. Yeah. And all of this honey that's gonna start dripping, yeah. they'll clean that up inside okay, So you see it's sort of bulging. Mm -hmm. um, instead of being a flat cap that the bees put over it, they put a sort of a rounded cap. Mm -hmm. 
that's because inside those cells are the larger drone brood. They need to make the cell larger because when that bee changes from the larva into the bee, it needs to be bigger. It needs to have enough room. Yeah. So the cell itself is bigger and then they actually have to make that cap bigger. You can see right here. That's why they protrude like that. Exactly, yeah. There was one, where is it? I've lost it now. There's a, there was one that was just starting to hatch out. Um, but it explains why we're seeing so many of these drones, because there's a fair bit of drone brood in this, in this hive. I'm a little surprised to see that. Usually you see more drone brood in the springtime. Mm -hmm. um, love is in the air. Right. That's when most of the, the trees are starting to bloom. Yeah. When there's more pollen and nectar, more resources available. We're just going to look at one more piece of comb here. Okay, so we don't have to inspect every one. No, and I don't want to. Okay, because, um, yeah, well, you had mentioned that before. As long as we don't disturb the whole colony, yeah. we'll be okay. Yeah, I'm kind of, uh, I was sort of hoping to find the queen, and this this is, tends to be where she hides out, is in the central brood mm. chamber. Okay. Um, so I was... Kind of hoping to find her in here. So we're getting into, you can see all of this bottom part, and there's almost all of the cells are capped. It's called a really tight brood pattern. You mm. want to see the more you, of those next to each other that are capped, the better. It indicates that the queen is healthy, that she's laying very regularly. Okay, so um we ha we have a healthy hive here in your opinion you're happy with what i am we're, yeah. we're ins finding and inspecting i am the 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 one concern i mentioned right at the beginning was those hive beetles that we saw right um, i'm not seeing a ton of them these bees are fairly hygienic which means that they will keep clean their hive if they find a predator or a pest like the hive beetle mm -hmm. they'll try to remove it um, so, I'm hoping that they are able to find sort of a happy medium. Oh yeah, we're getting to the, the heart of the hive or the center here, is yeah. that right? Yeah, yeah. So we're we'll find more, more of the eggs maybe more from the, the eggs, inside more out. The and then the same thing with these next ones. I'm just going to do a few of them at a time because I've already got, like these two are nice and flush. Mm -hmm. I can lift these together, move them all at once. Start at this end. Try not to get in your no, it's fine. sight there. Don't think about it. Here we go. And then I'll just proceed until I get to... What I'd like to do is harvest a little more honey down here at the end. We had a couple bars that looked like they had a fair bit. They're getting upset Let's about see. something, okay. so we're going to do... Now, now my smoker is... Oh, now it's not working. Maybe gone out. <laughs> it tends to burn out eventually. This is a really, I mean, this is a beautiful piece of yeah, foam. Yeah, sure it's is. That perfect trapezoid shape. You can see they built it right to the edges of the box, but didn't connect it. Wow. This is a, uh, a keeper. <laughs> A keeper? Is that a joke? Is that like a beekeeper joke? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, that is a lot of comb, a lot of honey, I guess. Yeah. So each one of the bars, if it's a full bar, just like that one was, tends to be close to a quart of honey. Just like to say no bees were harmed in the filming of this short documentary. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love bees. Bees obviously love me. See how many are on me? They're just trying to kiss me and show their love.
this piece can go into our bucket. Well, that's it. We did it. We went and inspected the, the beehive colony here at my new, my new home, my new place, and my new friend, Philip here, who has uh, helped us and shown, uh, shown me a lot of cool things about uh, bees and keeping them and keeping them healthy. Thanks, Phil. <laughs> Philip. Take care. <laughs> Bye, bees. Beautiful. It's actually almost.